hear me. Good morning, Beacon Hill. All is well. Good to see y'all this morning. Uh, be the glory. Um, welcome again. If y'all do not know me, my name is Jafar Tucker. I'm one of the pastors here at Beacon Hill. And for those first time listening online, I ask you welcome and give a hand for Mr. Ben Wright, who's leading us on Facebook Live. Amen. We also want to thank the Fixed Ministry. They did an amazing job, amazing job. The message I will bring you this morning is from Hebrews 12, verses 3 through 11. Verses 3 through 11. If you need a Bible, please raise your hand. We will gladly give it to you. Take it as a gift from us if you do not own the Word of God, and it should be already marked where we're at, where we'll be reading scripture this morning. Amen. And I will give you definitely some time to find it. If you find it, please give me an amen. Of course, if you don't, you can also follow me through your Bible app. Uh, we encourage you to read along with us as we preach the word. Please don't take my word forward. Everything comes from the word of God. Man can mislead you, but God will keep you definitely where you need to be. Amen. Everybody's found it? Hebrews 12, verses 3 through 11. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline, God dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children, not as sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us, and we have respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the father of spirits and live? For they discipline us for a short time based on what seemed good to them. But he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. This is the word of God. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer this morning to thank you for this day that you've given us, Father God. Praying for Pastor Michael and his family and the mission team also who will be leaving out Wednesday, Lord, that you would keep them safe and bring others to Christ. Return them home to us safely. Father God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning that do not know you through this message or even after this message, Father God, that they will come to know you through the Holy Spirit, Father God. Pray that you guide me in preaching your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I've entitled this, this message that I'm preaching this morning is a little bit personal and hits heart, but if you're a parent, you can definitely relate to this message. How many of y'all, I'm going to ask you a quick question. As a child, has discipline never felt good? I can remember, and all of you can remember being disciplined by our parents. Some different, and discipline, there's different levels of discipline. Me personally, I had the old school, I was raised under the old school approach which I call belt to bottom. We all have had those same memories. Simply put, it did not feel good. Trust me, from a child's perspective, perspective, during that moment, we didn't understand. All we could feel was that belt hitting our bottom. And when a parent ever says, this is hurting me more than it hurts you, as a child, you're not trying to hear that. <laughs> But I'm going to share this story with you. See, my dad 
who is still a truck driver, by the way, had a camper in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And, 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 and there he had that camper. Instead of driving from Petersburg to Carlisle, back and forth, back and forth throughout the week, he stayed on that camper during that week. And even through the summertime and springtime, as a family, we would go down there and, and have a good time, spend our summer breaks down there at a swimming pool and everything. At a nice little pool, pool um, air hockey table. I still got a little dent in my nose when I played my brother Tracy when the thing hit my, my nose. But I forgive him. It's all good. But instead of, how can I put it? I chose to have, it was a teachable moment, because that's why I called this sermon a teachable moment, a temper tantrum. Me having a temper tantrum, right? My brother, Dexter, who was laying down at the time in the camper, you see, we had one of those tables in the camp, those who are familiar with it, that fold up from a bed to a table. Okay? So it was one morning, the summer of 85, where I decided to wake up. It was, it was fairly early, maybe around 8, 9 o'clock. I wanted to play with my transformer. Okay? Anyone who knows me, I'm a huge transformer fan. I can find my, famous trans, my favorite transformer. All I wanted to do was to set that table up and play with my transformer. That's all I wanted to do. I, not, I shook his shoulder. I said, Dex, wait, I'm, I want to play with my toy. He looked at me, turned over. Dex, Dex, I want to play with my toy. Turned over. So I decided to get mad. I was impatient. So I broke one of the accessories to my Optimus Prime. Snapped it in half. Urgh! My mother looked at me like I literally lost my mind. Keep in mind, this is the same toy that I begged and begged my parents to get me, and I finally got it for Christmas. All the little, little things I used to do, you know, you, those who saw me with the J.C. Penney's catalog, the best catalog and all that, I leave little hints on that bed. This is what I want, circle it. Finally got it, but I decided to break a piece of it. So I hear a stern voice in the background saying, Jafar, come here. Whew. I was shook. I walked. And had one of those curtains behind where it separated the bed from the kitchen, the, the bedroom from the kitchen. I look. I said, what did you just do? Why did you do it? I don't want to play with my toy. I want to play with Margaret's Prime and Dexter wouldn't get up. So you broke what well, we pretty much got you. Son, go over there and get my belt. I looked at that belt, and that belt was hanging on a knob of a dresser door, just hanging. Give me the belt. And this is not in my notes. I, 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 I walked over. I, I, I just could. I was proud. I was like, no. For some reason, I thought if I didn't get that belt, I wasn't going to get that spanking. So he called over. My other brother, Rodney, Rodney, bring me that belt. He come bringing it. He looking at me like, you done messed up now. And needless to say, everything seemed to go in slow motion from there. Those of you who are familiar with Transformers, it's, it's, it's a punchline that says, more than meets the eye. That spanking was definitely more than meets the eye. But see, again, I didn't understand. I didn't see the big picture because I thought, my parents was being mean. Why'd you, you know, I just want to play with toy. Why, why would you spank me? Because I didn't see the big picture. The big picture was I let my temper get the best of me. And there's consequences for my actions. As followers of Christ, we must understand that there are consequences for our actions. And it's done out of love, not malice. But let's dive to the word of God, verses three through four. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself so that you won't grow weary or lose heart. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your own blood. Bless you. Jesus' attitude towards suffering is important for us to understand. Keep in mind, Jesus suffered much hostility from those who hated him 
because of their own sinful nature. The same individuals basically hated him because of his message and what he stood for. The life of Jesus was one life lived with righteousness and perfection. And that troubled his adversaries. It made his adversaries look within themselves. This is the hard part. Yet his persecution was sorrowful, but it was meaningful as it pertains to this text. Like Christ, we as Christian, like Christ, we as Christians also suffer many hardship, trials, and tribulations. Amen. We must realize, however, our struggles, although are difficult, does not even compare to what Jesus went through for us. I'm not here to say that the struggle and what you're going through is easy. I'm not sugarcoating. I don't know what you're going through right now. But my prayer is whatever you are going through, that you know where your strength and where that source comes from. And it comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. But the source of this strength, you can only get from him. You cannot get it from a self-help book that tell you how to live your best life. You can only get it from him, but you have to know how to get it. You have to read his word. You have to meditate on his word. You have to be intentional. He gives us all we need. Are you willing to sacrifice your time and make zero excuses to dive into it? Much like how we are tested and strengthened through the, our Christian journey, who in here works out in the gym? Your intention is. How a muscle is developed is basically by the fibers literally being torn and regenerated. It sounds strange because you're saying tearing a muscle, you're in a muscle tear. We're not talking about the muscle tears that athletes suffer, but little strands are torn and then they're repaired. That can only happen when the muscle is being stressed and pushed to its limit. That is how we are as Christians. Life test us. God put us through tests to strengthen us. may not feel good at the time, but it's part of our development and maturity. Amen? Let's look at verse 5 through 8. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplined the one he loves and punishes every son whom he receives. But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Explanation for this is that we must understand as children of God the benefits of our Heavenly Father and when He disciplines us. I'll say this again we must understand the benefit of when God disciplines us. Nobody in here in their right mind wants it, but we must understand it. To be clear, it's unpleasant as it relates to our threshold emotionally, but it strengthens us in a couple categories, morality and character. Verse 5 tells the hearer God uses discipline as part of his training process and that love is God's reason for disciplining us, each of us. It also mentions how we are to properly receive his discipline with the right attitude and not take his discipline lightly. I'm going to stop right here. I want you to explain to you about taking his discipline lightly. Any of you who have been disciplined by your parents, me included, it's done for a reason for us to 
understand that their authority is to be recognized. But we also need to learn why we received that discipline, correct? Not to take it lightly. Not to say, oh, you know, I got through it. I'm going to still just do what I want to do. It doesn't work that way. Some of us are more hard-headed as usual. It's in our sinful nature, right? As God's children, we are to receive his discipline with humility, realizing it's for our own good. Like a soldier is trained and disciplined in order to be put to, in order to put them in the correct path. Same way as through our Christian journey. A couple bullet points here. Each Christian is enlisted in God's training program. Did you know that? Non-Christians are excluded. What do you mean non-Christians are excluded? You ever sit back and wonder, and you see somebody, everything's going right for them. You're doing all you can do, but you can't catch a break by raising hands. And you're sitting back looking like, what are they doing that I'm not doing? I'm like, I know what they do and, and the things that they do, they, they keep on flourishing and I'm still struggling. It's a reason for that, church. And it's more of a reason why we're here as Christians. God corrects those who belong to him. When it says here non-Christians are excluded, he can't correct you if you have not submitted to him. Satan already has you. But like the army says, I want you. Christ wants you. But you have to go to him. He's not a dictator. It's not a draft. You have to go to him willingly and submit to him. Amen. Bullet point two, God uses discipline as part of the training process. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of the journey. The writer is telling us not to lose sight of his purpose through our times of discipline, for will it, it, it will indeed hurt. But as parents, we spank our kids. They often say, oh, getting spanked. Mom, dad, that hurts. Ooh, ooh. You know, I got, I, I got a son in here who should remain nameless right now. Say, how many, how, how many, how many I'm going to get? Want to count down? Like, I mean, how, how, how many I'm going to get? But I explained to them, and it was explained to me, it's not supposed to feel good. It's how I'm going to learn from it. How are they going to learn from it? But while receiving discipline, and we do this all the time, we're tempted to be bitter against God. We're angry. This person is getting away with this. But God, why are you punishing me? And speaking on punishment, speaking on punishment, as Christians, we almost, we must be very careful when we look at people who are in sin, and we know they're in sin, they're not followers of Christ, but we sit here and say because something that happens to them, God is punishing them in some kind of way. God deals with his children how he see fits. How he disciplines them is between him and his children. When my dad disciplined me and my mom disciplined me, they didn't go down to the next door neighbor's house and say, this is what I did to my child. They took care of it in house. So as followers of Christ, let's be very mindful of how we say such and such or a group of people is going through something because of what they do and how they behave. Amen. We tend to go off course as followers of Christ. As a result, making bad decisions and bad choices. However, these choices incur consequences from my righteous father. Understand God does not take pleasure in chastising his children, but he loves us enough to do it. 
If you think God is sitting on high with a pointer saying, I'm going to get this one, I'm going to get this one. Oh, I can't wait to that one mess up. But God already know what we're going to do, amen? It still don't give us free right to sin, but God already knows what we're going to do. If you think he takes pleasure in teaching his children a lesson, no, he loves us. He would rather for us not to, but because of our sinful nature, we sin. And sometimes his way of punishment may not necessarily be an infliction. It could be that he chooses to be distant. And anyone who knows if you're distant from God, that's a horrible, horrible feeling. You're still saved, but their relationship is broken. We should rejoice in the fact that God loves us so much. He never loses interest in us. I want that to sit in. Rejoice in the fact that God loves us so much. He takes interest in us to discipline us, church. It's easy to overlook the fact that if you was not disciplined, I want you to look at this. If you were not disciplined, a child who is not disciplined, what tends to happen? Yeah. They, they, they're going all over the place, right? We're not that much different. A child that does not receive discipline, believe it or not, is set up for failure, church. Set up for failure. Not doing them any favors by letting them do what they want to do. I reference Proverbs 13, 24. The one who will not use the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him disciplines him diligently. If you do not believe me, just observe how a child behaves as a direct result of a lack of discipline. We live in a day and a time and an era where parents are neglecting their responsibility to raise their own children and relying on educators to do the job for them. The teachers in here who are here, you can relate to that. I can recall many times witnessing little children. I work in the public schools. I can recall, and in grocery stores, I can recall many times witnessing little children in schools talk back to adults to the point of even putting their hands on adults, telling a, a teacher or their own mother, shut up. Now, I'm going to expand on this a little bit. This is what I call I wish you would moment. How many times have I been a grocery store and a child tells their parent, no, shut up. <clears throat> I wish you would. My own children and my wife can contest to this. I've seen children do this and my kid, poor kid, they, they didn't do nothing wrong. We sitting there going through the grocery store, I got the best. We did, they didn't do nothing wrong. And I see this behavior being displayed. I'm like, wow. And, and, and the mom said, oh, it's going to be okay, Johnny. It's going to be okay. No, no, no. We don't do that now. I look at my kids. I wish, mom, but mom, dad didn't do nothing. I wish you would. <laughs> but I didn't do anything. I'm, do I'm just letting you know, in case you have any idea, any thoughts, I wish you would. Looking back today, I'm grateful my parents loved me enough to hold me accountable. Whether it was a reprimand followed by a backhand or belt to bottom, I was taught right from wrong. I'm grateful my Heavenly Father loves me enough to deal with me when I decide to do things my way instead of doing things his way. Verses 9 through 11. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us as we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time based on what they seemed good to them. But he does it for our benefit so that we can share his 
holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful, yes it is, later on. However, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Like children are to respect and submit to their earthly parents, we as Christians are to do the same on an even grander scale as it pertains to our Heavenly Father, church. Further letting us know that his discipline is for our benefit. Note, no, no, in, in order to share his holiness, I'm going to speak on that in order to share his holiness. But notice how discipline keeps on popping up in, in, in a lot of these verses. Yeah, you're saying to yourself, this verse is saying the same thing as this verse. Why do you think, why do you think that? They're driving the point home. It's deliberate. When something is mentioned over and over again in the Bible, it's done for a reason, church. I've done research on Hebrews. The author is unknown on who wrote this text. I obviously know it's an author, but the author is unknown. But obviously the author is letting us know that discipline is important, church. Think about it this way. When mom and dad discipline you, hopefully, hopefully you learn from it. Although your bottom may have been a little sore, you now have an understanding of what your parents expect from you. At least I hope you do. As a direct result of you hopefully learning your lesson, I keep on using the word hopefully because some of us are a little bit more hard-headed than others, okay? Hopefully you learn your lesson. Your parents... You and your parents, as a result of that discipline and learning your lesson, became on the same page. It was that understanding through discipline that strengthened your relationship between you and your parents. Children are to please their parents by honoring them and respecting them. Likewise, our relationship with God is strengthened because of his discipline. As a, as, and it restores our relationship with him, leading us to repentance, church. And that's a direct result of turning away from your sins. I'm here to tell you that you can't lose your salvation, church. No matter what mistake you made, you can't lose your salvation. But understand, the fruit that you produce is a direct result of your repentance. God loves you and he forgives you, but it doesn't give us the right to willfully sin because we're saved, church. I'm not here to doubt your salvation, but if you're not producing the fruit, that's between you and God, and that's a conversation that you need to have. Which lead us to our altar call. What I'm trying to explain and convey to you this morning from this message, church, the most important thing, if you don't get anything from this, is what I'm about to say right now. If you do not have a direct and personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to do it right now. Do not wait and put it all for tomorrow. You may be living your best life right now. Whatever you may be doing, it's none of my business. You know what you're doing. You may be living your best life right now. And you don't want to be bothered with God. I'm doing just fine. Trust and do believe. We all have an expiration date. And not a single one of us here know when that time will come. I would rather be in the arms of someone who's going to not only protect me, but hold me accountable when I mess up, who's going to call me out. That's what I want. A child knows when they're loved, when they're disciplined. Children need structure. Children want structure. As adults, believe it or not, you want structure. But you can only get that through Jesus Christ. The only way you can know our righteous father is through him. There is no other way. No other way. No matter what the world may tell you. 
The only way to have their relationship to the Father is through Christ Jesus. You can take what I say right now lightly. That's on you. But I'm explaining to you right now. I can't tell you when the end of the world is going to come. I can't tell you when Christ is going to come. But keep on playing around. As the prayer team comes up, please, if you do not have a relationship with Christ, you have questions, please come up. We will pray with you, whatever you're going through. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer this morning to give you all the honor and all the praise, Father God. Lord, thank you. Thank you even when it hurts, Father God. Thank you for disciplining us, Lord, chastising us when we go astray. Thank you, Father God. holding us accountable, always watching over us and being present. Even when we're going through our struggles and we don't thank you there, Father God, you're there. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning for everyone in the sound of my voice that they do not know you this morning, Father God, that they come to know you today through the Holy Spirit, that you would touch their shoulder, Lord. They will leave their seat and walk down right now, Lord, and submit their lives to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. To God be the glory.